What's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. As you can see in front of me, today we've got a nice review for you guys. We've got a couple of different style diagnostic power probes. One is going to be the Power Probe 4, and the other one is going to be the Snap-on EECT 900 multi-probe unit. Now, if you've checked before, these are actually produced by the same company. Oddly enough, they're put into the same market together, but they are produced both by Power Probe, even though this one is sold by Snap-on. They're both an awesome unit. Now, it's not going to be an exact like com full comparison review because they're not the exact same tool. I'm going to be showing you the positives and negatives differences in the two tools. So hopefully if you're looking for something like this, it gives you a good idea on what kind of tool that you would like to purchase. So stay tuned. Now on first impression of the Power Probe 4, this is the case that you're gonna have it come in. It comes in a nice blow modally case. The actual unit is right here. I don't know if I like the green, but I know they come in different functions. Uh, it's a nice ergonomic design. It's got a little beeper inside of it. Your three button display as, as well as your toggle switch for your power or your ground. We'll get into the functions here in a couple of minutes. The Power Probe tip itself is about a three inch tip removable so you can put different accessories onto the end that is a standard meter accessory end. Here in the kit you also have a disconnectable meter end lead, nice clamps. The cable is actually a pretty nice thick cable design, power and ground as well as you're going to have a circuit ground for doing circuit testing. It's like if you were to want to tap into a blower motor or something, you're going to be able to tap that on plug that in and be able to put a ground to a nice little area. The cable on this one is gonna be 23 feet long. It is a nice sturdy design. What else do we have in here? Power probe sticker and a user's manual. Now I know they have quite a few different kits that comes you know, for this one. You're able to get this or a master's kit or you know, a couple of different options in between here and there. But this specific one is just the basic kit because I actually purchased the snap on one and then this one was given to me just to do a comparison review on it, just to show a couple of the different ones. I used to have a Power Probe 2, but I really wanted to get the input and uh, versatility just to show on the newest Power Probe 4 for you guys. It's a pretty decent little tool. I've had a chance to use it for about a week now. Uh, so we'll just get into some of the other functions of it now. When we first plug in our power probe, we're gonna put it onto a 12 volt battery. You can hear it power up with the nice loud tone, and then it's automatically gonna to go to the voltage DC portion of the tester. This test is actually just gonna be for reading voltages. You're gonna be able to put the tip onto power or ground, and it will show you exactly what it's doing. When we're here hooked to a live battery, we've got our positive hooked up to the red clamp, negative on the black, and then we are able to just touch. That's gonna to show our positive. The little red LED is gonna light up there to show you that you have voltage. Now you can also see there at the bottom how it shows the peak, min and max, and actually we can turn off this loud annoying buzzer also. You're able to see that it's got the peak and the dip of your max and min voltages that you're testing. We go over here to our negative side and you're able to see any voltage that you have there as well. And then you also see that it's got the green light lit to show that you are on a ground circuit. Whenever you connect it in and we're using it, you see we have two nice bright LED lights here on the tip. The tip is very sharp. If you need to back probe any kind of wires, that does work really well for that. I do like the screen, it's a nice, color LCD screen for you guys, and it's got a whole bunch of other modes as well. The three bu button function here, you're gonna be able to go into your mode selection, and then we're gonna be able to scroll on down through all of the different uh, areas this, this thing has. So 
when you first start this thing up, every time it's gonna automatically go to your voltage DC. Then we're gonna go down and check out a couple other ones. Your feed test, that one's gonna be testing output functions for certain drivers. Like I said, a true AC RMS uh, meter, that's gonna be able to test that there for you. Peak to peak voltages on AC, that's gonna be for testing like your tone rings, some of your sensor output. That'll be nice to see for some of those ABS wheel speed sensors to be able to test those, uh, those circuits as well. And then we're gonna go down into our um, frequency center. Uh, that's gonna test your hertz of frequency. And then when we go into that one, that's gonna show your pulse width of the frequency in the high and low sector. So we're gonna go back down. The other cool thing that this one does have is a fuel injection tester. Once you put this thing in line with one of the fuel injection, it's gonna show you the pulse width modulation of those uh, fuel injectors. The two lights up here are going to light up and flash at the pulse width value of the fuel injectors to show you how it's working when it's working. Back to the menu. The PPECT mode, that one's gonna be actually in conjunction with using the electronic short finder that's gonna come in the master set. So this, uh, this set actually doesn't really have much of a function for that one. It's gonna be able to find different circuit shorts into it. When you put power into the circuit, it's gonna be able to help you pinpoint where that short is exactly. Then the driver test, that one is just gonna be able to put this one in line with what would be a driver. So if for instance, you would want to test out, say a purge solenoid, you would put this thing in line in place of the purge solenoid. So you're gonna automatically read the voltage coming into the meter. And then you would put the tip into the output, which would, would be normally like a PCM grounding circuit. And then you can use your scan tool to automatically ground the circuit, start the actual actuation, and it's gonna show the, the high side or low side driver of the PCM. It's really nice for checking those outputs out for the driver modes. All in all, a very nice power probe. It's able to do a whole lot of different functions, and especially for the price on this one, guys. The other functions that it did have here in the three buttons, when you have readings like in your AC, and it's gonna show your peaks of max and min voltages, you hit the clear button, it's able to clear out what the last readings were. Looking back down here onto this toggle switch, when you're using this one, this is actually what your output is going to be to the actual tip. When you hit the up button, that is gonna put out 12 volts as in use with this battery or negative would be the down. It's going to supply ground to whatever circuit that you're trying to find. Really nice for being able to test blower motors, any kind of output on you know some bigger circuits, just to show, yes, if I put power to this one, the circuit does physically work, so I don't have to go check the control side. It's nice able to turn that annoying beep on and off and the LED lights do give you an indication really quick of what you are doing. All in all, a very nice power probe. Now when you get to using the power probe and you are putting power and ground to different circuits to try to operate, say, like a small pump, a coolant pump, or a blower fan, and all of a sudden it starts pulling too many amps, this thing does have an internal circuit breaker. Now in previous versions, there was a circuit breaker button that you had to push to reset once it cooled off. This one is automatically going to reset itself. It usually takes about 10 to 15 seconds before it's able to reset but it does automatically reset itself. In the cable, I don't like that this one is not a replaceable cable end. Here, where it's usually gonna go bad, this does not remove from the power probe. It's not replaceable. Usually on the snap-on one, it is able to unscrew and you're able to service this end. Now at the other end of things, at the clamp, this end section with the clamps on it is going to be replaceable. This one's able to pull apart and you're able to replace the clamp end of your test leads. All in all, it's a really nice tool. 
It's going to be able to help you guys out with your circuit diagnostic needs. I would definitely recommend it to you. Price point, this one's going to be found at right around $115-ish for the standard set. You know, depending on where you find it, between $100 and $160, bucks, I would say would be a uh, general price for it. Now, when you get up into the master kit that has the circuit detection, a couple of the extra leads, a little bit of the fancier uh, circuit pins, then you're going to be looking at right around the $250 mark. That's going to be something that you guys, you know, will want to look into. And there's going to be a whole bunch more accessories for this one as well. With the tip that is removable and it has the standard meter lead ends, you are able to put standard meter pins or extension cables into there as well. Makes it a pretty well-rounded universal tool. I would definitely recommend this one for you guys who do a whole lot of diagnostic and circuit testing. Then we've got the EECT900. Through Snap-on, like I said earlier, this is also made by Power Probe. They just make it exclusively for Snap-on. Comes in this nice little box here. The thing I don't like about this kit right off the bat is it doesn't come with an actual case. You either have to keep this box or you have to purchase one of the, uh, the soft mesh cases or something to keep it in. For right now, I've got it in this, but I'm probably gonna put it in one of those soft mesh cases. First look into what's in the actual package. You've got your tool. The tip on here is the same as the power probe, also removable. Also has the standard electronic banana jack for it. And then the leads are just about the same. Uh, the same diameter thickness. The coating on the main part of the cables on this one is a little bit thicker than the power probes, but the actual cable size is about the same. Again, towards the end of this one, the end is also replaceable as well as your ground tip right here. It has the 20 amp inline fuse, also the same as the power probe with the banana jack able to go into your circuit ground clip function. The thing that is different between this one and the power probe is that this cable is replaceable. They made this one very nice and replaceable. It's the same 23 foot long length cord as the power probe. But this one, if you damage it, which usually it's gonna be up at this end, is gonna be a replaceable part through Snap-on, able to service in the field. They have it pre-calibrated to be able to be used for the meter function of this. Really nice feature that I do like. This one is a little bit more expensive. This one right now on sale is running $323 through the Snap-on sale. And, um, it's you know pretty decent buy, but it is gonna do a whole lot more for you guys. Nice ergonomic grip. You're able to hold on to it down at this end. Your lead ends right here. It is nice that you're able to turn on and off the lamp on the end. The end is gonna have two LED lights as well as your positive and ground features. Go ahead and power it up. You're gonna sing a nice little tune for you. This one does have a little bit more of a, a nice tone to be able to listen to, and it's actually going to be, you know, something I may not want to turn off all the time. Now, this one is going to be more of a standard meter when it comes to the actual probe part of it. We've got a menu selector here, and you're able to turn on and off the sound, as well as the clear function, same as the other tool. Now, this one's going to have five methods of use for it. First is going to be, we'll just go to our normal uh, voltage DC because that's what we're gonna be using most of the time. We're gonna go to that section. And we'll hit the menu button to select that. In this area, you see a whole lot of busyness going on in the screen. We'll get you a little bit closer here to be able to see. You're gonna be able to see your battery voltage up here up top, as well as your min and max right there. The first thing I want to point out here in the voltage section is here on the left hand side you're going to see a couple of different functions. You're able to scroll up to that and we are going to have an actual uh, battery status. So we're going to be able to see how good our battery is. We're going to be able to touch that one to ground. It says to press the positive. It's going to put voltage and amperage through and give a quick test to your battery. Normal battery. And then if we go into hot shot test, then we're able to touch the positive. It tells us to push the negative button. Also tech testing your connections and everything through the battery. It says everything is all normal. Hit the button again, just to go back to your standard screen. 
I do also like that this has an adjustable circuit breaker section. So over here, you're able to set your different circuit breakers between, I believe, five different settings. Going all the way up to, I believe it, yep, 30 amp. 30 amp circuit breaker is what you're able to adjust it up to. So when you're testing and putting certain amperage through certain circuits, you're able to adjust. And you know, if I don't want to really mess up certain circuits in that system, if I know I'm only testing a small like LED lamp, I don't want to have to put a whole bunch of amperage through it. So I'll set that circuit breaker very low so things don't get, start to get burned up for you. All in all, that voltage section is very nice, very helpful, able to test, tell you when you're on positive, Tell you when you're on negative right over there the lcd screen is very intuitive it's able to be seen in any light settings and like i said when you're inside of a dash having this thing where you're able to probe it and then the screen facing back towards you is a great function then we're going to go click back over to our menu and we're going to go and look at our switch setting click the menu button to select it. This one, you're gonna be able to have the tip act as a switch, or if you change out the tip and just put an alligator clip on it, something with a longer test lead to be able to test the different circuits. So you can see you've got a pulse area, which is what it goes to right off the bat, and you're able to change the pulses that it puts out in different time increments from one second, quarter of a second, half, those three settings it's really nice to be able to just tell you know that for turning a fan or turning a light on it's able to pulse it in that those increments and then we hit this button it's able to momentary be able to do it itself or latch it on latch it off just as you would select it so you'd hit the power button and it would turn itself on and leave itself on until you turned it off Go back over to our menu button and we're gonna check out the amps function. Here in the amps function, I really like using this one for testing small fans or small pumps. You're here in this section and then once you push the power or ground side is when it's going to pulse those different things. So if I hit the power button, it's gonna pulse power. It's gonna show you the amperage output that you have for that circuit and it also shows you your ohms of resistance for that as well between you know the power ground or what the actual circuit is pulling you hit that positive button again and it will shut off that pulse also able to do the same thing for the ground hit the ground it's going to pulse the negative to that circuit as well if that's what you need it to do hit it again turn it off again able to set your circuit breaker levels two, three, five, seven and a half, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 amp. Also a lot of different settings for you to be able to mess with. Records your min and max amperage there at the bottom. The C button will clear the settings that it reads there for the bottom. Very nice setting, very easy to use, I think. It's nice for testing those uh, maybe higher amperage draws if you know that you've got some kind of a ground issue, but you really want to test out if it's the ground or if it's that circuit. This is a nice function for that. Next section, we're going to select our ohms. This one is a very simple selection. It's just going to be an ohm meter, and you're going to be able to use it in conjunction with the ground clip source right here. So you're going to be able to put this onto whatever circuit that you need and then this is going to be able to give you the other end, the actual tip of the tool. The thing I don't really like about that is the negative portion of this one and the tip, you're only able to test that much distance. I would have liked it if this negative circuit ground tester, the lead would have been a little bit longer for using that one with the ohms. If I touch the tip to it there, get a good connection it's able to tell me i have zero ohms of resistance it's going to tell you your max and your min keep it right there until you hit the clear button and it will clear everything out for you just like in the other functions then last but not least we'll switch down and go to our voltage ac section again this one is going to be a true rms uh, meter built into it it's going to show you the hertz the min and the max of that, you're able to change your uh, 
between your true RMS, your point to point of your the highs and lows, just like in the other meter or in the uh, power probe, the pulse width, all able to change between those. The duty cycle, pretty simple. And then in the pulse width, you're able to check the positive and the negative side by selecting that button. Duty cycle and Hertz, it's all the same. You're able to select that as well. Pretty neat side. I don't use that one very often because as you guys know, in automotive field, you don't deal a whole lot in AC unless you're trying to read you know, the tone rings on wheel speed sensors or the direct output of an alternator, being able to see that up and down function on an AC range. Just like with the other power probe, this one is gonna be able to be used for 12 volt and 24 volt functions as well. And one of the other things that I would recommend that you guys get would be one of these, especially if you're working here on vehicles and such. This one is gonna be an adapter for the tip. Uh, power probe makes it and sells it you know, via this. I, I got this one, actually one of my uh, viewers got this one for me, thanks to uh, Mr. Dale. Appreciate that one. This is a five volt reference uh, little thing that you're able to add to the tip. You're able to take the tip of the probe off, slide this one into place. You're gonna put attach your grounding strap to the little grounding end, and then put the tip back onto that. So what this is gonna do when you are testing your five volt reference wires for a lot of signal feeds underneath the hood for those sensors that use a five volt reference, so you don't burn out the ECM or burn out the sensors, you, this is gonna uh, take the voltage from 12 volts down to five volts so you don't burn up circuits or burn up things within uh, the PCM or things that you're testing. So that one's really nice. I think you can get that one online for like 14, 15 bucks on the snap-on truck. That one's gonna run you about 30 bucks. One of the things that I would definitely recommend that you get as part of the kit. Like I said, both of these kits have, uh, you know, the master leads that are able to be used for it because the tips are very universal. They use that universal banana clip to them. The snap-on one, does not offer an actual master kit. Another downside to that one. So if I really wanted to get all those extra testing leads and such, it is not offered. But if you wanted to get the add-on master kit from Power Probe, then that would also work for this one as well. That's probably what I'm gonna end up doing is getting the master kit for the circuit breaker and other functions for that one but this one is gonna work just well. And I wanted to show you guys these kits just as their base function to show you what you get in these tools. Now I could honestly go into more review for another hour or so showing you guys in use functions of both of these tools. But the point was to show you the differences and the capabilities of both of them. And I think I've done that pretty well. The power probe in at the price point, like I said, of right around $150 or the Snap-on EECT 900 multi-probe slash meter all built in one. That one's gonna run $323 right now. They've got that sale running in the Hot Tools Flyer. The differences between the two, a little bit more serviceability and a lot more function to the Snap-on. Ease of use, a little bit less function, but price and cost is gonna be there for the guys who are just looking to test out a couple of different circuits power those little window motors just to check the circuit range on that one. But me personally, I would get a whole lot more use out of the snap-on version of it just because I like the amperage out of it. I wanna be able to test those circuits for their amperage output, be able to test those uh, components to make sure they are not pulling too many amps for the circuits that they were supposed to be in. Gives you a little bit more flexibility. So I have actually purchased this one and this is my tool. This one will be going back to the, uh, the Snap-on truck to be able to sell to somebody else. Well, that's about all I have for you today, guys. I appreciate you tuning into the channel. We are just about to reach our 13,000 subscriber mark, so give yourself a big high five for that one. And make sure you guys hit the thumbs up button for videos like this if you enjoy it, or 
Give a subscribe to me. Maybe you enjoyed all the rest of the videos and the tool reviews that I've been doing lately. I've really been enjoying them, especially doing it for you guys. Make sure you guys go over and check out Toolheads Crate. You guys have just six days left to get your first order in for the initial OG Toolheads Crate. This is gonna be a monthly subscription crate service that myself and Mr. JRC54 have been putting out for the technician, the tool lover, gurus, all in the one. Uh, it's gonna be a nice monthly subscription crate. You guys don't know what's gonna be in it, but it's gonna have things from shop supplies, tools, magazines, shop rags, different uh, coupon codes for things for you guys to purchase. We're getting in contact with a whole bunch of different suppliers and manufacturers in the tool community, especially some really great up and coming ones. You guys are really gonna enjoy that one. They ship out March the 15th for the first crate. After that, they're gonna ship out on the 15th of every month coinciding with that. I appreciate everyone stopping in today, and as always, you guys stay awesome.